G'day everyone. Now this video is going to follow on from the last video where I showed me installing the uh, head unit here. As you can see it, it's all up and running now. So this video I'll show you how I connected my own amplifier up to the speakers in the door and just a bit of a progress report. All right, now here I've just pulled out the 8 channel amplifier. It's got a whole swag of connectors on here because it's also a DSP unit. And what I'm going to do is feed the audio from the head unit into this via optical. And as he pointed out, it's a standard Toslink optical cable here. So I can just run this, so it'll be fiber from the front to the back. And he said Alpine used to use their own custom type, but now it's standard. So that's, that's easy, I had that cable in the cupboard. So what he said is the output of that, after the DSP that's in there, can feed the input to this one. So I'll have to look into that. There's a lot of uh, connectors on there, but I'll dig deeper into it when I go to hook it up. So there are my two amps. All right, now here's one of the two subs. Piss it off. Look at that. 10 inch sub, and there's going to be two of those in the boot. The sub, the existing speakers that were in there, these Dyn Audio ones, they, they're pretty beefy, so I'm going to try them powered straight from the amp here, which I think they'll go all right, so I didn't get new speakers for the doors. Parcel rack I'll forget about. Two subs, big capacitor for it. The head unit here, little cable to join them up and the amps and all their accessories. So I've got some work to do. All right, I've got a bit of a setup going here. So let me start at the start. I'll turn that down, it's active, but I'll get to that. First of all, I've got 12 volts from a computer power supply. Little switch to turn it on, and that feeds this little chalky block. And you can see it's dropped down a little bit, 11.78 when under load. But anyway, I've got that powering the Alpine head unit. And I had to switch that little switch to accessory so it would turn on on the red accessory line. Otherwise it turns on on host, which would be when it gets inputs from the, uh, the host system. But I'm bypassing that and using accessories. So that's there. From there I've got the controller, which is here. And in that controller, I've done a setting to turn off the built-in amplifier. Because it has an amplifier that can drive some speakers. But I'm feeding its output via optical here, along a little optical cable into the amplifier, so there's no need for the amplifier in that. So I've turned it off, save a bit of power, save a bit of electrical noise, and that's that. Now on this amplifier, it's got the eight uh, speaker outputs, which I'll be doing to the, the four doors. There's one of the doors there, so the woofer and tweeter is two, individually set up here by the software of all the crossover stuff. And for the subwoofer amp, it'll be getting output from this DSP out, which I haven't got the cable yet, but that cable will go from out there to in here. Uh, so I can't hook that up just yet, but that's what that'll be. And the capacitor is just sitting there, I haven't got to that yet. So that's the setup, and if I just turn it up a little bit. No copyright issue on this music, because it's fucking mine. So anyway, that's there. It doesn't sound that good out here on the bench, obviously, but just above here I've got a, a Jensen thing here. And if I turn that on, it's powering it okay, so... You know how these speakers don't sound any good when they're... Just turn that down. They don't sound any good on the bench, but it should sound good in the door. So I just wanted to stage it a bit first before I get going, because I had to really muck around in this software before I got any output, um, you know, because it wasn't using optical as a default, and I had to assign speakers to this output and that sort of thing. So it was a bit of mucking around in the software, which I had to run on a Windows VM because it wouldn't run under Wine. But anyway, it's working now, so it's all kind of there except just my sub-amp and the capacitor. So it's pre-staged, ready to go in the car. Here's the old factory sub behind here, which I might just pull out to be honest, because it's dead weight now. All right, that's the old sub. Once it's ripped out, that's what it looks like. And that's the spot where it used to live. Still no amplifier. <laughs> I'll find the count. All right, that should, I think, come out. Anything left? I think that's it. There we go. All right, <laughs> here's the boot. All right, now look what I've just found on the left side behind here. The amp. Okay, so now I know where I'm starting. Now I can't just take that out and put my amp there because first of all, I need this amp to get the high level outputs for the input of this one, but also there's not much space between there and this, and I don't like how hot this will get. Okay, I've got a signal out from my amplifier here that I'm just putting into the plug here to find a couple of speakers, and it turns out that that plug is all about the tweeters. And yes, that's Kylie Minogue playing, but never mind that. So that plug there is the four tweeters and the two parcel shelf ones on the back up here. 
So basically the little speakers in the system. Okay, the control is going to be mounted here. It's going to be sunken inside this. But for now, I can just run the cable from here to where the processor is going to be in the back. So I'll feed that in up there. And what I'll do is I'll drop it down there. And I'm not even going to lift this whole thing off. I'm just going to sneak it under there because I can feel sort of up over the loom there. And I'll get it to the back. All right, and that's here where the control is actually going to be. And from here, I'll run the optical cable to the boot. Okay, so I've got the optical out and the controller in. Now I need to run some speaker wire and then power cable. Now I've got to get a signal from the factory amp from the speaker output to go to an input on my unit so I can select that as an input if I want. That's why I had to figure out which speakers were which pins in the last couple of days. So I've got some speaker wire here. I've got the really thick stuff for the subs. I've got the thick stuff from my amplifiers to the speakers. And I've just got this thin stuff to get this signal into my processor. First I'm just going to put some solder on these wires. Like that. Okay, so the way I'm going to join them is put a bit of solder on, on the iron. And just hold it there while I do it. That's about it. And I've put a heat shrink on here already. Uh, but that'll do. So, let's do another one. I've already put solder on the cables, obviously. So this is just an extra little drop to put on, to put on there. Like that. So I'll just do the rest. All right, they're all soldered. So what I'm going to do now is put the heat shrink down over them, like that, and just shrink that on with the heat gun. Shrinking that down now. It's like taking a cold swim. Okay, so that's all joined up at this end. And one thing I like to do at the other end is just put a thin strip of uh, heat shrink around so I know which one's which, and that's front left, front right, rear left and rear right, just by the number of uh, little stripes around it. So what I might do now, I might do and I might not, is wrap some of this tape around it just to sort of keep it together so it's not flopping about separately. Okay, so here's my finished cable loom. That was the little bit I got with the Alpine unit. So there's my little joins there, and they go in there, all taped up, pretty much looking like a factory wire loom, and that'll just go to the boot. Okay, so now I've got the USB cable, the speaker in, the optical out, the controller in, which will go to this, and on here, there's the optical connection, I've also got a little auxiliary line in, which I may use for a future Raspberry Pi, possibly. So that might be coming in future. So the only thing left is the power, but I'm just going to neaten up the cable loom for that, and then that'll head off to the battery over there. Okay, I've done the yellow wire, which is the 12 volt to the battery, you see the little inline fuse there, and the remote wire to turn on the amps. I've just got to do the accessories in the ground as I install it. But the speaker outputs from this that I won't be using, I've just folded back on themselves and put heat shrink on there, just to tidy it up. Okay, I'm just doing a bit of a test with the amp and just one speaker powered from the computer power supply. And that speaker output's going through my loom, just connected to the front right door speaker on one of the coils, just for, just for a bit of a test. And up here, I've got the uh, controller. Well, turn that down. So as I said, that'll go in there when it's all done, neat and tidy. And uh, in the back, just for the moment, <laughs> this is the, the system here. So I've got the USB, I've got the controller, I've got the high level input, I've got the, what's that? Hang on a minute. Yeah, the optical output and the USB, uh, the remote line, which is the blue one, and the power cables. So that's what I've just got for a test. This bracket was just sitting under the back seat, not doing anything. So I thought I might use that to mount the Alpine to. So that's what we're going to do. And just like that, it's bolted to that. The bolts are a bit bigger than I really needed, but it's what I had, so it's what I used. Okay, now it's bolted in down there and everything's plugged in almost, except for the power cable, because I'll be doing that last. That'll be heading over to the battery over there. But that's where it's going to live. Now here's a cable that I had to buy extra, which connects from the DSP output of this amp into the low level input on the sub amp. And the reason I had to buy it was because there was a cable missing which normally goes to the pre-in, apparently, from everything I've read, it should have come with a pre-level cable. So on, on the main amp, it, it came with this sort of cable, which plugs in there with some RCA connectors, which I won't be using because I'm using optical. And it also has a cable for high-level inputs, which again, I won't be using. But there was no such cable for the sub-amp. So I had to buy this. So that, that was a bit annoying because I had to spend an extra 50 bucks purely to extend it anyway, because this cable's for if that amp's right next to the other, which Obviously, it was too far apart here. So anyway, I had to buy that, but they're connected now 
with direct low level input from the DSP output of that one into this one. Now I had some different ideas along the way of where to mount the amps. First I was going to put them on the shelf and that was ridiculous. Then I was going to mount them up under the parcel rack but then they'd be upside down, the heatsink wouldn't work. So now I've decided I'm going to put them where the old sub was hidden on the right hand side. Just like the factory amps on the left, I'm going to put mine on the right. I need to get this fuse holder near the positive battery terminal which is there, you probably can't see it but it's right there. And along here there's a bar, some sort of structure. And you won't really see it on here, but there's two holes already in it, which are the same size holes as the bolts for server racks. So what I'm going to do is put this metal plate on it and bolt the fuse holder to that. Okay, so maybe it's clearer with a bit of light. There's a fuse holder and there's a positive terminal. That's just the bracket I slapped to the frame of the car. Okay, now on the factory amp, I've got the speaker outputs here. And what I've got to do is tap into them to get that speaker output so it can be an input to the Alpine. So this is a high level input to the Alpine unit. And then, for my cables out from the Audison amp, I'm going to feed that to the cable loom here to go off to the speakers. Right, now I've got to get to the speaker wires here, so I've got to get into this loom. And uh, judging by some of the comments, some of you people are going to have kittens when you see me cut into this. Anyway, you'll survive. Okay, I've got my notes for the pinouts of the speakers and the colour codes that I did in a video recently. So I'm going to cut into these speaker cables. Okay, the white and yellow is the back left door, and the red and red and black is the back right door. So I'll just leave a bit on that plug, and get ready girls. Fucking cut. And the other one. There you go, that's that. Hope that didn't hurt anyone. Fucking girls. Now some of these speaker outputs, not the back door ones, but some of them, will be going as inputs to the Alpine unit for the high level input. And I'm still waiting for some heat shrink to arrive, so until that gets here, what I'm going to do is just put some crimp connectors on here, just for now to keep me going. So I'll strip these, and put a couple of these on. So that's pretty decent cable here too, by the way. Certainly thick enough to carry what I'm going to send that way. So these crimp connectors are what I'm talking about. I'll just uh, put that in there. Just crimp it down. So I've got something to work with for testing. Okay, to check for the phase of the output of the factory amp, I've got this very special set of headphones here where I've got cable going to each, each side individually so there's no common ground. They're totally separate to each other. And I've got red and black polarity cable so I can just test the output of the amp and I'll be able to tell instantly through the headphones if it's in phase or out of phase. Okay, so they're the backdoor speakers. The next couple of pairs are for the sub, which I'll leave there because I'm not doing anything with that at the moment. And these are the dual coil in the front doors. So, and roughly the same length, I suppose. I can snip, snip, snip. The last one's got to be a cut. There it is. All right. Okay, now I've put crimp connectors on all the speakers here, well the ones that I'll be using, and there's a lot there so I couldn't be bothered solving that. And the ones that go to the front doors are doubled up because they're dual coil, so you can see there's two pairs for that one there. So that and the other one that's around here somewhere. Fuck where it is. Oh no, there's another one here with two, that one, that one there. So those go to the front doors. Okay, after a lot of crimping, I've got the outputs from the amp just sitting there for the moment. In future they'll go to the input of the Alpine, but that can wait for a little bit, so I'll just leave them out of the way. I've got my cable loom from the amplifier going into the eight speakers here that heads off back into the doors. And the only ones I've got left plugged in is the center speaker and the two back pastor rack, which I've actually pulled out, so they're not there. So I've still got the center speaker for the moment, um, but that's where I'm up to. Okay, now I'm at the battery, and I've got the negative cable sitting here ready to go on there. And the positive, I've got to find a way to get it onto there. There's a terminal underneath this black uh, plastic cover. So I've got to get the main power to it and also the power for the Alpine unit. And obviously that's going to go through the fuse here, which is which is there. So, take the negative off first, I guess. It's in a shit of a spot. It really is. Before I go messing around with the battery, I'm going to get the other side of this fuse organized and just get this lug ready to go in there. So the negative terminal there and the positive one is just underneath this thing there. All right, so I've got my amplifier fuse here, big chunky thing, and a little Alpine fuse here. So I need to get them 
on the positive terminal and the negative one on there. So I'm going to remove the negative terminal first and then connect the positive stuff up and the negative. Alright. Car's off. I heard a relay click in there too. Powering down. The dash cam just said it's powering down, so I guess that's lost power. And that's that. Right, I'm not going to be able to film this and do it at the same time, but there's the positive terminal. I'm just going to take that off, connect those, that red and yellow one onto it, and then put the negative back on. Alright, there's the positive side back on, so I'll just cover that up. So that's in there, going to the fuse and going off to there. Now I'll just put the negative on and hope it all comes back to life. Alright, here comes the moment of truth. Put my connector and the other one back on. Well, actually, the car one will be on first. Probably some arcs. Boom. There's that. Now mine. Some more arcs. Not many. Fucking get the bloody. Who fucking designed this shit? Where's that gone now? How yeah, many nuts run off? Alright, just tighten this up. Right. See what's going on. We have a simple test. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Well, the screen's on, it knows all the doors are open. Okay, just shut this door, open that door. Oop, fuck, the back seat decided. The seat just decided to move. I don't remember telling that seat to move. Ah, it said turn the steering wheel to the left and right ends and then straighten it. Left. Right. And straight. <laughs> it works. I was just getting a drink while this was loading, and it started up with the first song. It starts with some drums like. And I thought, what the fuck's that? Anyway, it's on. Now, at first, I didn't think this was terribly loud, not as loud as I'd wanted. But in hindsight, it's just crystal clear because I noticed after driving for a little while, my, I still got ear fatigue from, from the noise. So it is actually loud. It's just extremely clear while it's loud. So you don't notice it as much. Like it doesn't drive it into distortion. So that's good, I think. Okay, the boot works again. All I had to do was close it manually first once. And then it worked again. Okay, that's that. After I reconnected the battery, one of the silly yellow warning things has disappeared. So I'm now down to one, which is pretty good. Anyway, here it is over here, and I like it, obviously. And also, the, uh, the, the audio from the standard factory unit can be fed into this. So what I can do is do a setting on here. I do a mix source. I can actually mix it in, I don't know if you can see that. Mix it in with what I've got here. So I'll, you know, mix source selection. I can make it the high level, which will be the factory one. I haven't set any of this up yet, but uh, I'll look into that and all the rest of it. So you get the idea. It's in there, it's up and running. Okay, so that's how it's gonna be for the moment. The high level output from the old amp, as I said, will go into the high level input, but I'll just play around with that in the coming days. Uh, there's my new speakers, well, old speakers from the new amp here. And I've just got the USB thing plugged into the computer. So probably see up here, maybe not. I've just got it flat across all the speakers and apparently the, the voltage is 13.8 volts. So at least I've got some sound now. So I'm going to build a box for the boot here to house these uh, two 10 inch subs and that'll give me some serious bass and that'll be running off a different amplifier. So for those of you who remember the Tesla this is what I had in that although there was more space in the Tesla so I had the amps in the middle but I'll just have room in the seal to fit the two subs nicely. It's already got pretty decent bass without the subs. So there you go, the car's starting to feel more like my own car now with these little modifications here and the fact that it drives exactly how I want, meaning under my control, and the sound does what I want. So they're good, they're good things. It's been fun to do, you know, just learning about the car and what's where in it. And uh, as I said, I'm not done yet, so I'll do something with the subwoofers and, and get some bass in there as well. And uh, yeah, then it'll be done. The stereo anyway. 
So that'll do for now, but there'll be more coming. So until next time, take it easy.